I recently made a video called the Lebensraum Myth, in which I explained Hitler's reasons for declaring war on the Soviet Union in 1941. Although the post-war propaganda has been extreme, the truth is still readily available. To summarise, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was a reaction to the Brits trying to throw themselves into the arms of Stalin. The Brits, however, were terrible negotiators. They were unclear about what they could actually offer Stalin, and instead of flying to Moscow for the talks, they took an extremely slow boat that took weeks to get there. Hitler and Ribbentrop jumped on the opportunity and made a deal before the Brits could. The cost was the Baltic States, a place with a long history with Germany. If it meant saving Germany from being surrounded, albeit temporarily, then it was a necessary sacrifice in Hitler's eyes. The idea that this was some kind of permanent alliance is ridiculous. The ideologies are simply incompatible. One is hyper-nationalist, the other is hyper-internationalist, just to name one key difference. There was always going to be friction. That friction was immediate. The Soviets ripped Bessarabia away from Romania and began to make moves towards absorbing the state as a whole, whether via their influence or just by straight up occupying it. There was constant border clashes between Romanian and Soviet troops, especially in the Danube Delta. As a result, the Romanians threw themselves into the arms of Germany. The Soviets then tried the same with Bulgaria and Turkey. Stalin wanted full control of the Dardanelles, so he tried to coax Bulgaria into teaming up on the Turks. The Bulgarians instead joined the Romanians in running into the arms of Hitler, as their country was bombarded with Soviet infiltrators and propaganda. In the north, the Soviets were putting heavy pressure on Finland, and were trying to influence the election in their favour, as well as meddling with Finnish politics in general, so they could set up a puppet regime. The Finns, too, threw themselves into the arms of Germany, a nation they had incredibly close historical ties with. The most pressing matter of all, however, was the Romanian one. If the Ployest oil fields just north of Bucharest were taken, then the German armed forces would grind to a halt. Romania produced more oil than every nation that would end up joining the Axis combined, as well as Japan and Spain. There simply was not another comparable source, and the German military could not function without it. Perhaps this issue, most of all, is what caused the war in the East. After all this had happened, Hitler took a gamble to test the waters. He invited the Soviet foreign minister, Molotov, to Germany and invited him to join the tripartite pact, knowing the Soviets would refuse. Molotov immediately replied with a huge list of demands in order to join, and they were akin to handing over the Balkans to the Soviets, which obviously the Soviets knew Hitler would never accept. From this point on, war was on the cards for the near future. The Soviet build-up on the German border had been going on before this, but now it went into overdrive. The biggest concentration of troops in human history was lined up on the German border, as well as the accompanying airfields and tank parks. Most damning of all was the railway tracks lined up towards Germany. The railway gauges were the European gauge size, not the Soviet one. They were entirely offensive, not defensive. A Soviet invasion was not only probable, but inevitable. If the Soviets were given time to continue their build-up, then all would be lost. The USA was guaranteed to join the war in the foreseeable future. That much was clear, as the US Navy was already attacking the Germans in the Atlantic. All that was missing was a formal declaration of war. If mainland Europe were invaded by the Anglo-Americans and the Germans had to take troops from the east, then the result would be obvious. Total annihilation. Soviet policy had always been to let the Western powers obliterate each other so that they could capitalise. This situation was no different they would pounce at the slightest sign of German weakness. The only option for the Germans was to strike now. Soon, it would be too late. Perhaps it already was too late, but the Germans had to try before they were swallowed up by the industrial might of the Soviet Union. So, this is the real reason the Germans invaded the Soviet Union in 1941. Anyway, this is what leads me to the point of this video. I was reading a book for another video, and came across an explanation of Operation Barbarossa so egregious that I had to discuss it. The book was about Germany's allies on the Eastern Front, named Death on the Don by Jonathan Trigg. When it comes to the actual topic of Trigg's books, he's a decent author. I've read a couple of his books on the foreign SS divisions, but when he mentions the politics or reasons for the war, he enters the realm of propaganda and just straight up misinformation. You could say he's a military historian, not a political one. I'll quote in full his description of why Germany invaded Russia. Quote, Hitler's war, and this was one man's war, was also a new type of conflict. Europe and Asia were used to wars of conquest, fought for land, resources, power, and prestige. But in the Russo-German struggle, these factors were secondary. This war was fought for one reason, and one reason only. Race. 
Hitler's worldview, his Weltanschauung, was clearly expressed by his acolyte Heinrich Himmler, the sociopathic head of the SS, in a pamphlet he wrote entitled DSS. Quote, As long as humans have existed on Earth, war between humans and subhumans has become a rule of history. As far back as we can see, this Jewish-led battle has become the natural course of life on this planet, end quote. In other words, whereas Karl Marx saw all history as a struggle between different classes, the Nazis saw all history as a war between races, a Rassenkrieg, the prize for the victor was world domination, and all that came with it, power and riches for eternity, while for the losers, the abyss of total genetic extinction beckoned, end quote. It's hard to know where to begin. The idea that Germany invaded Russia for reasons of race is beyond absurd. In fact, it's telling that he quotes Himmler and not Hitler in his description. And even then, Himmler is talking about another group, not committing such an act himself. The reality is that the war was nothing of the sort. Firstly, let's look at it from a logical level. In 1941, Nazi Germany was in the middle of a war with the British Empire, in which she had no means of bringing it to an end. The Brits had dragged the Scandinavians into the war, and Scandinavia had fallen. The Brits had dragged the war into the Balkans with the Yugoslavian coup, and some could even argue the Greek campaign. Everywhere the Brits tried to expand the war resulted in failure for the poor countries they were using. Now it was just the British Isles left of any importance, but the Germans had no means of reaching her by sea or by air. There was also no means of making peace. All peace offers, including one in which the Germans would leave all non-German land, was denied. Rudolf Hess had flown to Scotland to make peace. In return, he was imprisoned and refused access to the outside world for the rest of his life. Winston Churchill was hell-bent on war. He didn't care, he was being paid to go to war. It was a precarious situation. Germany was fighting an enemy that was willing to sell off all the assets of her empire to the Americans, simply to defeat Germany. There was no logic to be had on the British side. Now Germany was sat in Europe, knowing that the Americans would soon come. If that happened, the Soviets would come crashing down on them, as they had been preparing to do. Does this sound like a scenario to suddenly begin a side quest in the form of a race war? Or does it sound like a backed into a corner situation where Germany decided to preempt the Soviets before the opportunity was lost? Let's ask Hitler himself. I'll use a quote that Trigg in fact quotes in his own book. This is the Fuhrer himself speaking to his soldiers before they set off east. Quote, soldiers of the Eastern Front, weighed down for many months by grave anxieties, compelled to keep silent, I can at last speak openly to you my soldiers. About 186 Russian divisions are lined up along our frontier. For weeks, this frontier has been violated continually. Not only the frontier of Germany, but also that in the far north and in Romania. A build-up is in progress which has no equal in world history. You are standing on the Eastern Front. In Romania, on the banks of the Prut, on the Danube, down to the shores of the Black Sea, German and Romanian troops are standing side by side, united under the conductor Antonescu. You are about to join battle, a hard and crucial battle, the destiny of Europe, the future of the German Reich, the existence of our nation now lies in your hands alone." End quote. To me, this is an open and shut case. Others may say, however, that Hitler was simply lying and that this was a pretext. In response, I would say, who was Hitler lying to? Germany was a pariah state, hated by the world, why would he need to lie to his men? They were all on the same page. These men were willing to lay down and die for Hitler and for National Socialism. If he had told them it was a race war, they would have marched east for Hitler's race war, regardless of how silly such a thing would have sounded at the time. The reality is that he didn't say it was a race war, and that was because it wasn't one. Under this quote of Hitler's, Trigg somehow goes on to say, quote, So, with the prophetic words of Adolf Hitler, Führer of Nazi Germany, and the man about to launch the mammoth venture that was Operation Barbarossa, planned in 1940, the intent was to destroy communism as an ideology, and occupy the Western and Central Soviet Union all the way to the Ural Mountains in the east, with a border running on the line from Archangel in the north to Astrakhan on the Caspian Sea in the south. Once this was achieved, Himmler and his SS were to go to work exterminating and enslaving the majority of the former Soviet peoples in order to create a new German empire in the east, the so-called Lebensraum for the Aryan master race that he and Hitler fantasized about." End quote. Whilst writing this script and having to read these quotes, it's genuinely hard to keep a straight face. The most horrifying thing of it all is that people genuinely believe this stuff. Let's look at the reality. The Germans marched into the Soviet Union and were greeted by most with open arms. 
For now, they would not be needed as soldiers, but thousands upon thousands volunteered to help the Germans regardless. They were especially well received in Ukraine and in the Baltic states. Soon, however, hundreds of thousands of these men would be allowed to volunteer to fight alongside the Germans. This is where the narrative runs into serious problems. If these men were viewed as subhumans who they were about to kill, why on earth would they arm them? In Ukraine, Trigg even states in his own book that the Germans enforced their anti-abortion laws there and arrested abortionists. If the Germans wanted to kill these people, why would they punish practices which lowered their birth rates? Are we to believe, as Trigg states, that as soon as the Germans reached the Urals, then some kind of real-life Order 66 would come into effect? We are meant to believe that the Germans would suddenly turn on their comrades in arms, men they had fought and died with, and just kill them? Or is it more likely that me, as well as many other historians, are quite right in suggesting that the war had a far more logical cause? People talk of plans the Germans had for the East, but conveniently for people, like Trigg, all of these happen to be magically burned. So instead, let's focus on the reality. What happened under the few years of German occupation in the East? Let's ask one of the most respected historians of the 20th century, A.J.P. Taylor. He explains the reality in depth in his book, The Origins of the Second World War. Quote, But was Lebensraum Hitler's sole idea, or indeed the one which dominated his mind? To judge from Mein Kampf, he was obsessed with anti-Semitism, which occupies most of the book. Lebensraum gets only seven of the 700 pages, then, and thereafter, it was thrown in as a final rationalisation, a sort of pie in the sky to justify what Hitler was supposed to be up to. Perhaps the difference between me and the believers in Hitler's constant plan for Lebensraum is over words. By plan, I understand something which is prepared and worked out in details. They seem to take plan as a pious, or in this case, impious, wish. In my sense, Hitler never had a plan for Lebensraum. There was no study of the resources in the territories that were to be conquered, no definition even of what these territories were to be. There was no recruitment of staff to carry out these plans, no survey of Germans who could be moved, let alone any enrollment. When large parts of Soviet Russia were conquered, the administrators of the conquered territories found themselves running round in circles, unable to get any directive whether they were there to exterminate the existing populations or to exploit them, whether to treat them as friends or enemies." End quote. Does this sound like the work of a mastermind bent on exterminating Slavs and Bolts? It would require some absolutely extreme mental gymnastics to come to such a conclusion. Millions of Slavs and Bolts at the time certainly didn't think so. If they believed they would suddenly be turned on, then there certainly wouldn't be any Latvians fighting and dying in Berlin like there was in reality. Ukraine had already long since been swallowed back up by the Soviets, yet thousands of Ukrainians fought and died for Adolf Hitler and his cause. Would they have done this if there was even the slightest inclination that they would be killed for being seen as Slavic Untermensch? The run-of-the-mill historians have got it wrong. Men espousing views such as Triggs cannot possibly believe what they are saying. Such things are simply wartime propaganda espoused by Stalin or Churchill. There is simply no basis in reality for the war in the East being a race war. In fact, it was quite the opposite. One of Hitler's allies during Operation Barbarossa was Slovakia, who were Slavs. Another of Hitler's allies who wasn't involved in the invasion was Bulgaria, also Slavs. Furthermore, the Third Reich had the most diverse army in history. Muslims, Christians, Pagans, Germans, Scandinavians, Frenchmen, Slavs, Bolts, Armenians, and an almost unlistable variety of peoples were fighting and dying on the Eastern Front together. After all, Trigg already knows this, considering he has half a dozen books on the various foreign SS divisions. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please do leave a like. As always though, the biggest thanks of all goes to my Patreon, Subscribestar, and YouTube members who make these videos possible. My videos are not monetized immediately and have to undergo a manual review. As a result, the vast majority of my income comes from subscription sites such as these. As this is my full-time job, these people literally make this possible, and I cannot thank them enough. So if you enjoyed the videos and you'd like to support me, join our Discord or our weekly Hearts of Iron 4 games, then please do consider signing up in one of the links in the description. Thank you. Even the $2 tier helps immensely. Thank you to Lobster to You, Darway Lolololol, Sigmar, Emperor Titus, Luke David Murphy, Chechen Natsok, Anton Berglund, Levi E, Friendly Brian, Mr. Malabar, Bushak, Firefly Enterprise, Henry Unruh, Evan Brightfield, Chef Jeff, Ethan Wynn Stanley, Wunderwaffe, Mr. Bloom, Gav D, Gaius Longanese Hanno, JD, Green Rebel, 
Angus Roxborough, Rocksacker Too Heavy, Alexios Podcast Watcher, Citadel, Haste, Bojan M, Rick Me, Mr. Gaming, Cameron, Sludwig 1919, Gloomy, Troy Harsa, Jagdkampf, Rowan, Swedish Chef, Honda, Mirko, David Byers, Max Anton, Gragas, Conqueror, Espen, Khan, Luca Marincic, Veritas Unleashed, The Real G, It's Okay to Be a Nationalist, Inflection Point, Vet Exempt, Automat 762x39, Monsoir Mercier, Charlie Black, The Waller, Suma Klubayek, Jorgen 1997, and Admiral Kempinski.